Good morning. I'm David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Research here at Red Cloud Securities. We are pleased to invite Global Atomic Corporation to speak to you today. I introduce Steve Roman, Chairman, President, and CEO, and Bob Tate, VP of Investor Relations. Global Atomic is advancing its DASA uranium project towards production in Niger. So gentlemen, you have about uh, 10 or 12 minutes, and then we'll have a few minutes at the end for a Q&A session. Attendees, please feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A link. So take it away, guys. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Roman, and we'll just flip through this very quickly. So uh, the next slide, please, Bob. Uh, we are a little different from most companies in that we're a positive cash flowing uh, company. We have a, a successful zinc operation running in Turkey, and we have our uranium division with four deposits uh, in Niger and West Africa with our big uh, project DASA now moving towards production. We'll move to the slide here. So this is a, a longitudinal section of our DASA deposit as it currently sits. It's still open on strike and down dip. This is a 250 million pound deposit and it's fully permitted. So this is something to take note of. And what we're gonna do is a, as a, a start for this operation is to operate in the red box there. It's the phase one area. It's about 20% of the, of the known deposit currently. The other 80%, of course, will be for further development for future years. But this phase one uh, will give us some tremendous economics and allow us to get started right away. We'll go to the next one. Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, a great tonnage chart that shows uh, the, the total deposit with different cutoff grades ranging from 100 up to 10,000. You can see even at a 10,000 cutoff, we have over 50 million pounds here uh, at about 2% uranium. So this is a little bit like an Athabasca style deposit, only it's in Africa. It's actually the largest uh, and highest grade uranium uh, discovered in Africa in the last 50 years. It's, it's a significant uh, game-changing deposit. So what we did is we did our economics on $35 a ton uh, for the phase one area. We'll be mining at over half a percent. You can see there 5,396 ppm. <clears throat> that gives us a 12-year mine life just for that area. Low capex, we're gonna be mining at 1,000 tons per day and an all-in sustaining cost of 1839. So this is based on a PEA we put out in May 2020. And of course, this is all being updated now with a feasibility study that will be released uh, before the end of the year. Uh, but at $35, the project is very profitable. And you can see here, if we uh, show you the sensitivities, we run it down to $25, we still make money and up to 50, of course, it's a, it's a significant cash flow and uh, after tax NPV. Again, this is at $35 a pound, uh, the, our base case, and this is only the flank zone area. So this is not the entire deposit. This shows you the, uh, the basic uh, production schedule starting just at the end of 2024. So we're telling utilities now we'll have yellow cake for delivery uh, January, 2025. And we'll be uh, mining at a thousand tons per day, producing between four and 5 million pounds per year. So we feel that's a sweet spot for a new developer, not too big, not too small. And you can see as the, uh, the bars move to the right, you get into the phase two mining and it just carries on at over 5 million pounds a year. We'll skip through this. So really uh, the key highlights is the discovery of the DASA deposit that we did uh, towards the end of 2010. 2011, of course, Fukushima hit and uh, things uh, went south, south in, the, uh, in the uranium business. So what we did is we uh, did a couple of things in 2017. We signed an MOU with Arano Mining, uh, the France, uh, France's large uranium company. They have two operations just north of us. And we also merged with our Silvermet Corporation, which gave us cash flow from the zinc asset. 
So that cash flow allowed us to finance uh, the project and develop the DASA project without diluting shareholders. So in 2020, we received our mining permit. 2021, we received the environmental compliance certificate, done a lot of studies, uh, engaged people to help us with the project financing. That's proceeding very well. And we have a number of banks shortlisted now that we are uh, working with. So these are just items here on this slide that show you what's happened uh, during 2021 with the feasibility study. Uh, and of course, everything's really been done and it's gonna culminate in a, in a report coming out very soon. So in 2021, uh, we'll be completing that study. We've all, already uh, started discussing with utilities about offtake. We started a 15,000 meter drill program to do two things, basically to increase the size of that flank zone area, but also to uh, upgrade the resource in the rest of the deposit to measured and indicated. It's currently uh, indicated and inferred. So we want to put a feasibility study around that part of the deposit as well, since it's the majority of the deposit. And so uh, we're doing an infill drilling program uh, that's already well underway. So in 2022, uh, January, so in uh, three months or so, we'll be breaking ground to start the box cut excavation uh, with, the, with the idea that the first blast for the ramp will occur in April. So uh, we've already engaged uh, two contracting groups, one locally to do the box cut and one Canadian group uh, out of Eldor, CMAC Tyson, they're currently working in West Africa. They'll be doing the, the portal blast in April and doing our underground excavation. So the idea is to uh, move that forward and uh, begin shipping ore to Arano sometime uh, later in 2022. And of course, then 23 begin our plant construction with commissioning at the end of 2024. A little bit on Niger, a uh, long history in the uranium space. Uh, of course, uh, the French have been uh, getting 30% of their supply from Niger. It's the fifth largest producer in the world. Uh, the good thing from our point of view is that one of their mines uh, shut down in March. So we've got that skilled workforce available to us. We're already uh, doing interviews. Uh, to bring in people to uh, effectively move from the Colmanac operation right into uh, DASA. So all the infrastructure is there. We're right on the main highway. Uh, power line is uh, right across our property. Uh, so uh, very supportive government. This is the Mines Ministry building you, hear, you see here on the left and the Niger River. This is downtown Niamey. And uh, it's a great place to work and a uh, good tax regime. And uh, we are moving forward at a very quick rate. This is uh, the DASA countryside. Uh, that's our exploration camp. And of course, it's much, much bigger now because there's a lot of activity in preparation for starting excavation. Uh, we'll have some updated photos. We've been big on the ESG side ever since we entered Niger and started uh, explora exploration in 2007. And uh, we bring in food, uh, medical supplies. We've recently been drilling water wells for local communities. So uh, very enthusiastic population in our area. They're really looking forward to getting this new project going. We'd like to make it a green operation with a lot of solar power and battery electric vehicles. So really a state of the art uh, new mining operation. A Little bit on zinc. We're located right on the Mediterranean in Iskenderun in Turkey. And uh, this is a picture of our new plant. It's state of the art, very clean, very modern and efficient. We uh, built that in 2019, knocked down our old plant and we produce a 70% zinc oxide concentrate that we put into uh, containers in our own port facility shipped to Europe. And uh, Glencore is our big customer there. We also sell to uh, Trafigura and Nearstar. Very profitable operation. You can see 2019 bar graph there is when we shut the old plant, ramped up in 2020. 
we're giving guidance for about 70% throughput this year, uh, just because of COVID and slowdown in zinc production in Turkey. But uh, at max capacity, it will process 110,000 tons a year and do about 60 million pounds of zinc. Uh, we have a 49% interest of Feza Zinc who farmed into our project have the operatorship and they have 51%. Uranium, uh, hot topic these days, and you can see the graph there from World Nuclear Association. Uh, the pink area is the deficit that is growing and uh, as 54 new reactors come on stream here in the next couple of years and a lot more after that, uh, there needs to be a significant amount of additional supply to meet the demand. So uh, we think we're in a, a new era for uranium and a new era for nuclear because of the net carbon zero uh, initiative around the world. And uh, we're happy to be here uh, developing this world-class asset. This is uh, just a ranking with other companies as far as what, what do people pay for pounds in the ground? Currently we're between a dollar and $2 You've got to take out the zinc, which has a value of up to 200 million, that operation. So really our, our, our pounds in the ground for a fully permitted project is, is nowhere near these other folks that are uh, not even permitted. So I think we've got a long, long way to run here. Um, this is at the end of September, market cap, share price, shares issued. So we're trying to keep uh, things tight, dilution to a minimum. We've got a lot of new good institutional shareholders that have joined the registry and uh, big participation by management and the board and a lot of retail. We won't go into a lot on the uh, management side, but uh, suffice to say, we have a very experienced uh, management team comprised of uh, ex uh, Arano people, Arriva people, Dennis and Mines people. And, uh, and uh, so we're, we're really uh, primed and ready to go to build this project and become a new producer. So just to wrap it up, fully permitted, established cash flow, tight share structure. And uh, obviously we're here to uh, participate in the big green revolution. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Stephen. So you mentioned that the zinc operation might have a valuation of a couple hundred million. You know, is there an opportunity to divest that operation to help pay down all of the initial DASA capex? Uh, that would definitely be an option, David. Uh, what we'd like to to do is actually use the cash flow coming from that asset to actually. Uh, pay and give banks comfort to, to the debt component we may incur to build the DASA plant. But we don't want to flip it out at this point because it's a brand new, very long life asset. And uh, the thought was that at some point, once DASA is up and running, we could spin it out to shareholders as a new uh, dividend uh, producing uh, vehicle. So uh, at this point in time, there's, there's no desire to sell it. Okay, and maybe explain the importance of the Arano agreement as well. You know, they, they can process material in the early days of the mine. Yes, uh, typically on a developing an underground mine, you're going to uh, open up your roadways, your galleries, uh, set up stopes for mining, and you'll produce what's called development ore, not stope ore. So this development ore typically would bring to surface and it would sit in a pile until your plant is built. And then you'd start processing it. Well, in our case, we can actually ship this development ore up the road and have it processed at Arano's Somayir plant. And it gives us a, a revenue stream that will go a long way to uh, actually paying for a plant. So uh, we have done a deal for a half a million tons initially uh, over a five year period. Um, this this is uh, now being buttoned up with some financial terms and toll milling uh, fees, et cetera. And we hope to have something announced to the market in the next couple of months. Okay, perfect. Well, we're up on our time. So uh, thank you very much, Stephen and Bob. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you everyone for uh, joining this talk. 